Hello, my name is Patricia Daly. I am the Helen Morag Fellow and Tutor in Geography and the Vice Principal of Jesus College. Uh, hello, my name is Dr. Michael Joseph and I'm the MG Brock Junior Research Fellow in History at Corpus Christi College. We're here to discuss the photograph of the college's Cricket 11 of 1903. In it, we see a young man of African descent who could be the first or amongst the first black undergraduate to attend Jesus College. So who was the first black student to attend Oxford University? For that knowledge, we have to thank Pamela Roberts and her pioneering work to establish Oxford University's black history. Her findings are published in her book, Black Oxford, the untold stories of Oxford University's black scholars. And Roberts identified that the first black student to study at Oxford actually joined University College in 1877 and read classics, and his name was Christian Cole. So what about at Jesus College? Was, um, obviously, it's really difficult for us to, to determine whether the young man in the photograph of African descent was, as I said, the first black undergraduate to study at Jesus, because our records are very patchy at, at that time. We do have good admissions registers which supply useful basic information about all our alumni from this period. And we note that this young man um, was John Wilberforce Rock. He was the eldest son of Abraham Rock, a builder and contractor of Bankhouse Road, St. Michael's in Barbados. He originally matriculated in October 1990 as a non-collegiate student to read classics However, in Jan January 1901, Rock was awarded an open classical scholarship worth £80 a year from Jesus College and promptly migrated here. He graduated with a second in classics mods in 1902 and a third in grades in 1904. Mike, what schooling was available for the black population in Barbados at the time? And would it have prepared Rock for an Oxford education? So, as, as you said, Rock comes from this sort of solidly middle-class background. His father is a, a prominent builder and contractor in Bridgetown in Barbados. And that allows him to attend Harrison College. And there are two things that are sort of worth noting about that. The first is that that puts Rock in a tiny, tiny minority. In this period, only about 55% maybe of uh, school age children regularly attend primary school. Um, most others are either kind of at work in the sugar industry, in domestic service, or else in, um, in the household. And so of that sort of 55% or so, only a tiny sliver would then go on to secondary school. In fact, there are only two secondary schools in Barbados for boys, which go up to the age of 18, so-called first grade schools, um, and which prepare students for university entrance, one of which is Harrison College. And so Rock, as a black Barbadian, to have attended Harrison College is a sort of minority within a minority. Harrison College was modelled explicitly on English public schools like Eton and Harrow and it had a curriculum which was shaped um, to, those, uh, to those specifications too. The curriculum was really oriented around the three C's, Christianity, Classics and Cricket. The philosophy at the school was a sort of muscular Christian ethic, we can call it, in which character and the sort of masculine virtues which students developed on the sports field were seen as just as important as the regard for a sort of imagined white civilization that they would learn through the classics in the classroom. And so if we think about English public schools in this period as being uh, central engines for reproducing British imperialism, then we can think about institutions like Harrison College as being important for that in the colonies too. And so Rock, coming towards the end of his schooling, would have sat exams set and marked in England. He would have had a very strong grounding in classics. And he won the only island scholarship available in Barbados, offered by the Barbados government, to come to Oxford. And so this really was his one chance to, to escape the island. It's a very rare opportunity for black students uh, in Barbados in that period. Yeah, Rock came as a non-collegiate scholar, as I said, to Jesus College. 
and um, that was quite normal at the time. Jesus had a lot of scholarships for students who did not have the resources uh, to, you know, to pay for themselves. And so at Jesus, Rock didn't necessarily encounter a lot of students say, from public schools such as Eton, even though his education was you know, mirrored on public schools. Here at Jesus, many of the students were from grammar schools and from lowly backgrounds. So in some way, he would have um, felt perhaps a bit more comfortable, but perhaps even, perhaps even better educated right, than um, the, the cohort that were here at the time. Yeah, at Jesus, Rock received an education. His cornerstone was classics. Um, he impressed his tutor, Ernest Genner, with his exceedingly good proses. Genner, though, also reported that Rock had struggled to settle. He, has, he said, he, he has felt the cold much this term, lives out, and has got to know few men. It's quite clear that in 1901, Rock missed some lectures wasn't um, always was changing his mind quite frequently his mind quite frequently about the books he, he wanted to study and pleaded ill health when um, he was queried and Gena wrote he's not ha very happy here this was in obviously in 1901 but by in his second year and third year when he was shown in the photograph of the cricket team seemed as if Rock had settled very well into Jesus College. Mike, was cricket then a way in which um, Rock could really be integrated into college? So sport really seems to have been Rock's social, Rock's route into social life at Jesus, certainly according to the notes we have from his tutor, uh, Ernest Genner. So we see him in the Cricket 11 photo from 1903. We also encounter him in uh, a photo ahead of a rowing dinner from the same year. And Genner remarked um, as well that Rock was, was very taken with ping pong, uh, as Genner called it. It was a sport that he seemed to play a lot of. Um, so maybe not so much has changed between, um, between now and then, people hanging out in, uh, in common spaces and uh, playing games together. Rock was very typical, I guess, in, in that respect, in, in terms of his, his sporting prowess and his, his love for, for sport at Oxford. If we think about other Caribbean uh, students who came here in the same sort of period, the likes of Norman Manley, who also came to Jesus, for instance, cricket was a way that uh, Caribbean students at Oxford got to know each other, socialised, uh, made friends outside of their colleges. And it was also something that they brought with them, in a sense, from their uh, schooling in the Caribbean. So Harrison College, where Rock attended, um, was uh, an institution in which cricket, as I've said, played such a sort of formative role in the whole kind of educational philosophy. And this was something that was very much sort of reproduced and maintained at Oxford. It was not uncommon for young men from the colonies to take a public service exam for, and join the colonial service. Many got posted to colonial outposts in the far reaches of empire, away from the regions in which they originated. There were three other men from Barbados there in Sri, in Sri Lanka at the same time as Rock. And we know this information from their, uh, their, them being cricketers and playing on the cricket team um, in Colombo and elsewhere. This information was uh, found in some of the reports in cricket gazettes. Rock served initially as a civil servant before becoming a district court judge in Gaffner. He married Marguerite Kate and had four children, three girls and a boy. He died in 1946 and is buried in Sri Lanka. His great-granddaughter lives in London and we would like to thank her for the information and photographs she supplied of his life in Sri Lanka. And we'd like to also thank Robin Dowell Simit for his research on rock. So Rock's journey is in many ways a remarkable one, this journey from Barbados to Oxford to Ceylon. But as Patricia has said, it's also in, in some ways a, a typical one. Um, if we think about the educational journey that he's been on, it's this role in the colonial service that he ends up in is in a sense what his entire education has been preparing him for. And so Rock 
helps us to think about the ways in which uh, the British Empire was able to sort of reproduce itself, um, not only through sending uh, students schooled in Britain out into the empire, but also through posting students from the empire to different regions. Um, this kind of ambivalent role that they occupy as, as both colonised and, in a sense, becoming coloniser too.